actually, we were here kind of last year a little bit with uh, some of the light sport aircraft. It's called the Hornet. Uh, it was, it's being made in California, I believe. That's correct, down in the San Diego area by uh, Higher Class Aviation. Now, how are you getting involved in that then? Well, we wanted an entry level aircraft into the light sport arena. <laughs> and uh, we've been looking for something that was challenger like, and this uh, fit the bill. Now, is this the only aircraft that you're uh, currently carrying as well, or is there others? No, we, we have others. We have the uh, TL Ultralight, which is uh, the Sting, the carbon Sting that's made a pretty big splash, uh, low-wing, high-tech aircraft. And then we also have, uh, we're dealers for Titan. Uh, we have a Titan Tornado, which uh, we were going to bring up, but uh, didn't quite make it. And we're also T-51 uh, dealers, too. Now, Wix, though, in the, in the business, is not known for selling aircraft. Uh, they're basically one of the largest uh, aircraft suppliers in the industry. Right. We basically are the uh, experimental aircraft builder's friend, and uh, we've been doing that for about 30 years now. And that's basically how we got started into it was built a KR-2. Everybody liked all the, the neat parts that were in it and started from there. Now, what, on, uh, say somebody were to look through a catalog, what would be some of the things that they find in your catalog? Well, it there would be the unique, uh, say, to Wix over uh, some of the others. Unique to Wix. Well, we have uh, some of the best uh, Stitka spruce around. Uh, we custom cut anything that you want in spruce. Uh, we do a lot of custom uh, main spars. Uh, we also do some custom T stringers for people. So I would say our, our spruce is, sets us apart from everybody else because it is such a high quality uh, wood that we do. Other things. Uh, it's kind of boring, actually. Uh, uh, MS bolts and nuts and washers, uh, cabling and, and whatnot. But we have kind of expanded. We're going out more into the pilot shop type stuff. Uh, we're now starting to carry headsets, uh, handheld radios, handheld GPS. So uh, we are branching out away from the nuts and bolts into more of the, the pilot uh, pilot shop stuff. I'm looking at this aircraft here. This is called the uh, Hornet. Okay, well this is our demonstrator and uh, we had higher class aviation build it for us because we wanted to see what kind of product that they would produce. And then we took delivery of it this January and I've been flying it uh, for 36 hours now and just doing some little modifications to it in conjunction with uh, higher class. Uh, and they like everything that I've done. I've sent them pictures and documentation so they've actually incorporated it into their new Hornet and they're calling it the Super Hornet. Uh, because they upped the engine too. This has the 582 and the new Super Hornet has the 912. And what are some of the different uh, or some of the things that you've recommended to them or that you've done on this thing? Well, since it's a pusher aircraft, it has a lot of, uh, it's pitch sensitive. So every time you adjust the throttle, you also have to adjust the pitch with the trim. Well, the original trim was on the dash right here where I've got this black button, which is my parking brake. Well, every time I adjusted it, <clears throat> I had to reach up to adjust the trim. Well, the flat panel is very close to it. So you can mix up your two buttons pretty easy. So I said, no, let's put it on the stick. That's where it belongs. So now, you adjust the throttle, you adjust the trim, which makes it very, very nice to fly. And again, this is electric trim on it that's operated right on the elevator. Correct. And it's actually, it's a, the entire elevator moves. It's not a, a trim tab. The actual elevator moves itself. So you're really taking any of the loads off of any of the control systems, though. There's no load there. That's correct. That's correct. Now, what else have we done to it then? Well, the other thing I did was it, it has a brake system that's unique to the Hornet. When you go aft stick, the brakes come on. Well, if you're trying to start or do anything in the cockpit and you want the brakes, you obviously always have to hang on to the stick. So I said, well, we need to put a hydraulic switch valve in for a brake system. So you pull this, you release the stick, now your brakes are set. Just like uh, any general aviation type aircraft. Now you have both hands to do a mag check, because you have to use the throttle and the mags, both hands, and you're not worried about zooming all over the place. So you, the brake feature was uh, was a biggie for me. What I told, what I told uh, Robert Gaither, he's the owner of Higher Class Aviation, what I said is, don't be offended to what I do to your airplane, because all I'm going to do is try to make it more certified aircraft-like. 
like a big chip. Because I'm a general aviation pilot and also 20 years in the Air Force, so all my flying was with certified type aircraft. So when I got into it, I said, I'm going to convert your ultralight to a certified plane. And he said, okay, go for it. More comfortable for the certified guy when they step into it. That's right, that's right. Now, this is the, when uh, Hornet first came out, it was powered by a little uh, Hearth engine, and I've seen it with a 503. Right. And I actually did an interview with uh, Sonic with the 912, but this is the first 582 that I've seen on one. The 582 gives it a, a little bit more oomph at 64 horse, and uh, so it's a little bit more comfortable with, say, two 200 pounders in full gas. But the, uh, the real engine, the, the one that's going to really set the Hornet apart from everybody else that makes it the Super Hornet, is going to be the 80 horsepower 912. That, that makes it a, a fire breathing dragon. You bet. And what kind of performance are we getting out of it uh, with the 582? With the 582, on a standard day, uh, you're getting about 700 feet a minute climb, 6 to 700 feet, and at cruise, you're cruising uh, indicated about 85 miles per hour. And what would the stall come in at? Stall comes in at around 40 miles per hour with full flaps. So it, uh, it comes in nice. And then with the full suspension landing gear, you can really plop it in short. <laughs> yeah, that's a very unique. It's got an airbag suspension on for uh, suspension. Yes, it does. And it gives you approximately five inches of travel in the, uh, in the landing gear. And that was another thing that we added to, uh, to Robert's design is we said, we want to land on some really rough stuff. So we had these Tundra tires, and after we talked to him on the phone and we sent him the money and they said, okay, we're building your airplane, I said, let me send you some tires that I want to put on the aircraft. Well, when he received those, he, <laughs> he called me back and he said, these things are huge. I said, but it'll, it'll make it great. And sure enough, uh, you can really land on plowed up fields or whatever, and it, it hangs together. You also have some sort of a building program that you're working on as well? It's a, a builder's assist. Right now we're kind of in the infancy stage, so we offer uh, classes monthly. We've had a, uh, a fabric class, uh, a metals class, um, an electronics uh, wiring class. So it's it's all on the internet and uh, the dates are, uh, are listed on the internet. If somebody want to get more information, have you got a name, address, website where people can get a hold of you? You bet. It's uh, wixaircraft.com. And then we have a little side uh, click where you can go to the Wix Air Center. And that's, uh, that's us. And you got a phone number there for those that don't have internet access? Sure, it's 618-654-7447. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you.